Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is sort of a part two from my previous video because it is the turn of the other Seastern that I unboxed not too long ago. It was probably three weeks ago. I'll put a link into the corner of the screen. I think it's one of these ones. I never get it right. Uh, to the unboxing in case you've missed that and you want to uh, check it out. It is the turn of the Doxa Sub 300 Homage. That's what we're going to be reviewing today, which is this watch right here. And I have to admit that up until this point, Doxa or a Doxa Homage wouldn't have been on my radar because I was never into the cushion style case. It just never clicked with me. That's why I actually never had on the channel a Captain Willard or a Captain Willard homage for that matter because there's so many of them on the market. But I have to say that now I kind of see what the fuss is all about. I kind of see what the main attraction is after spending uh, a few weeks with this and I get to see why people like these things so much. Full disclosure, this watch has been provided for review by Seastern. I don't have to return it, I get to keep it, so bear that in mind as the video goes along. They haven't had any input in the making of this video, so again, just keep that in mind, and that's why you may have seen the paid promotion tag in the corner of the screen. Now, how good is this, and obviously, is this as good as the 62 Mass Homage? Is this as much of a good deal as the 62 Mass was? Let's take a look and find out. One of the cool things about an homage watch is that usually you have slightly more variations when it comes to the dial and in this case you have this mother of pearl dial that looks absolutely stunning. I personally like this just because it's not something you find in the original and makes it a bit more genuine, hence why this is slowly growing on me. In terms of dimensions we have a diameter of 42 millimeters. So it's just at that limit, I would say, if you have an under six inch wrist, a thickness of 13.6, a lug to lug of 46 millimeters, and we also have these beads of rice end links that point downwards. So this is actually a true 46 millimeters, and we have a lug width of 20 millimeters. Weight of 155 grams, size up for my 6.3 inch wrist. So a bit of a chunky boy, mostly due to that cushion style case, I would say. It also feels like it takes a lot of space on the wrist due to that additional material on the side of the case. So it wears more like a 43, I would say, probably rather than a 42, like the diameter would suggest. It does feel a bit top heavy at times, but that beads of rice bracelet does help with the overall comfort factor. I just feel it on the wrist from time to time. I just feel the presence now and then, but overall it's not actually that bad. The case is made out of 306L stainless steel. And since you have that additional material on the side of the case, I would say the entire upper part of the case is brushed and the actual side of the case is polished which is actually a very good polish. Decent finishing overall when you consider the price. We also have a screw down crown at the three with the Seastern Starfish logo. Very easy to operate and enough grip. I would even say that it's enough for diving gloves. Between that and the screw down case back, we have a stated water resistance of 200 meters. So you should be pretty safe taking this in the water or in the pool or wherever you want to go. Moving on to the bezel. This is slightly unusual, I find, because it is slightly raised from the case. Pair this with the serrated edge and you have an excellent grip. I mean, excellent. 120 clicks, super solid and no backplay. It does turn slightly easier than I would have wanted, 
but I've seen a lot worse to be fair. This is just a slight moan that I have. Let's talk about the dial. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, one of the advantages, if I could use the term when it comes to homage watches, is that you might get certain dial colors that the original doesn't have. And that is the case here. We have this mother of pearl with shades of purple and green predominantly. But depending on how the light hits it, you might get something different every single time. This really catches the light nicely. The dial is quite simple, but very well executed. For starters, everything is printed. Rectangular hour markers in white with a date window at the three with a frame around it. In terms of writing, again, they kept everything super simple. I would say that like the previous Seastern that I reviewed, I would have loved to see the Starfish logo at the 10 o'clock instead of that writing. But then again, this is something that they might introduce in the future. You never know. It all depends. These are just the first two watches they release under the brand. So maybe, maybe we'll see something like this in the future. But I really like that logo. I think it stands for something, especially uh, in this case. The hands are also something that draw a bit of attention and more specifically the minute hand because that definitely stands out. To my knowledge, this is the only thing needed when it comes to diving and it has to be super legible. I can see the whole purpose behind it, but I find that this is the only thing that stands out and I can see every time I check the time. It definitely fits in the whole theme, the whole diver theme quite well, but just again, it's just something that you have to be into and just something again in this case that you kind of have to keep in mind. The loom on this is actually quite good. Based on the standards of the previous Seastern, we have a BGW9 style blue, and I'm referring to it this way because this is not BGW9. It's something else that glows with the same shade, but it's not BGW9. One thing to note here is because those indices are all printed, this doesn't shine as bright, but when exposed to light, it does last a decent amount of time considering the fact that those are all printed. Overall, it's not actually that bad. The movement in this is the trusty NH35. You probably know the specs by now, but I'll put them on the screen. Anyway, like I mentioned in my previous Eastern video, more and more micro brands are slowly moving away from the NH35. And some AliExpress brands actually are opting for either the Myota or the PT5000, which is becoming more and more popular since there is a major shortage of the NH3635. But then again, that's a story for another video. The bracelet on this is a beads of rice with solid 20 millimeter end links. And I have to say that this is very well made considering the price. We have a mill clasp with four micro adjustments, no pushers, just a safety to hold it in place. It's very easy to open, but just you just have to be a bit more precise when pressing it to close. No biggie at all, super comfortable, no sharp corners, and it makes this watch very comfortable considering the weight, so it's distributed quite nicely on the wrist. To sum it up, guys, this Doxa Homage will be more than enough, I would say, to scratch that sub 300 itch if you don't have $1,800 to drop on the original. Personally, I would have to say that you have to be a fan of this style to go for this, but Seastern has made sure that you're not left short if this is up your alley. That was it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Click a like, subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss a video. Thank you very much again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.